my name is Manya and today I'm going to be taking you to two thrift stores in the Dutch slash Frisian countryside. Two of my favorites, currently the Netherlands are still in a lockdown, sort of, but you can make appointments to go to stores. So at the first store I have 25, no 30 minutes and at the second store I have an hour to shop around and get some stuff. I'm also looking for home decor and maybe some vintage clothing if I can find something cool. If you don't know, my family and I are currently in the process of moving from Germany back to the Netherlands. So that is also why I'm currently here, taking care of some of that moving business stuff. But also going thrifting in the meantime. Let's go inside, let's see what they have. This store never disappoints me. By the way, all the addresses are gonna be linked in the info box down below. This store is not huge, but it is always filled with lots of different things. I usually find really good home decor here and once in a while I'll score a vintage gem as well when it comes to clothing, but it's definitely mainly a home decor store for me. I thought that these mugs were interesting and I was surprised to see that they were actually made in Germany because the motives on them with the tulips and all look pretty Dutch to me. Pottery was kind of neat, but a little too boring for me to actually purchase it. I don't know if you can tell, but this mug was ginormous. When you're here, you always have to look up and check all the sides of all the shelves because they have things hanging everywhere and you might miss something otherwise. I was thinking for a second whether to get these little needlepoint pieces because I have one just like this at home but then I decided to pass on them. I couldn't tell whether this was modern or not because it looked very vintage to me but then there was a shiny glaze on the bottom and no mark and I don't see that a lot with vintage ceramics so I'm not really sure. I'm still on the hunt for my Supal set with a matching terrine. There was no terrine here, unfortunately. This glass tray was quite pretty, but I don't have a place to put it in right now, so that's why I left it. This little watercolor painting with the typical Dutch house was so neat. Looking back in hindsight, I totally should have gotten it and just put it in a different frame at home. This industrial locker style cabinet was also kind of cool for storage, but it doesn't really match my decor style, but I definitely appreciated it. You know I had to go for the brown vase as soon as I spotted it, but I did decide to leave it because it just wasn't special enough for me. And at most thrift stores, you'll also find royal paraphernalia, but mostly mugs and plates, and yes, if you didn't know, the Netherlands still actually have a king and a queen. I found two vintage Chinese porcelain containers that I actually put in my cart or well, basket, but then decided to not get them, and I kind of regret that now. They would have made such a nice pair together. Leather lampshades always creep me out. I don't know if I'm the only one, but I just find them extremely terrifying. From far, like very far away, this looked like Murano, but yeah, as you can see, it definitely wasn't. The mark on this sugar pot looked very much like it was made in West Germany. But the creamer was missing and it's always better to have a set when it comes to this, so I decided to leave it behind. I now present to you the creepiest vase 
I ever did see. I have no idea who would ever purchase anything like that. I'm pretty much convinced this was an unwanted gift at some point and then the person just donated it. I mean, I just had to be, I mean, just, just look at those nostrils. The glaze of this goblet almost looks like it's fat lava, but it had this like random thing in the middle. I have no idea what this is. If you know, please leave a comment down below because I'm, I'm intrigued, but also confused. Honestly, in the beginning, I thought, Ugh, I think I'm not really finding anything here, which I was really bummed out about because this is usually my favorite store I, um, when it comes to the countryside and I always store great gems here and they're very affordable. But then I walked to the cash register next to it was the most amazing set of dishes. Make sure to stay tuned until the end to see what they look like. They are absolutely stunning. And now I'm heading to store number two. The first thing I noticed when I walked into the store was this shelf full of all those vintage treasures. And I couldn't believe it when I noticed these Gouda, and in English you'd say Gouda vases. And then I couldn't believe the price because they're asking 60 euros a pop. They are highly collectible and I am on a mission to find others that are definitely more affordable than this. They also had a second set that they were selling together, but still with those prices I just couldn't. At first I was kind of into this wooden tray, but then I took a closer look and I was like, mm, I don't like it that much. This cast iron plant scent was kind of cute, especially for a garden, but we still don't know whether we'll actually live in a house or an apartment, so yeah. For a second I thought about picking up this tin because my grandma had a print of this hanging in her home and she passed away six years ago. I still miss her a lot and it reminded me of her, but I left it because actually I was kind of terrified of that guy's face when I was a kid. I was wondering for such a long time what this was. I thought at first that this must be a, like a kind of quirky set of brass vases or something and when I came home I looked at the numbers on the sides and um, there are actually bullet shell casings from like way back when. Really big ones. It's kind of cool but also weird. Here I am just randomly checking out basic vases and hoping for the best and them being disappointed because of the price, like almost 10 euros for this one, come on. I did also give the second one a try as well, but um, it was only one euro cheaper, but also at the same time it was a lot smaller. You can really see me kind of trying to get a good panning shot and then spotting this dark green bowl set and just going for it. I was really wondering for a little bit what this was, like kind of turning around looking at it. It was this big bowl, a bunch of small bowls, and then this like random tiny spoon. And when I saw the nuts on the small bowls, it just clicked and this is a nut bowl. Like probably everybody would get their own little bowl and then just could scoop nuts into it out of the big bowl. People were really fancy back in the day. They also had a bunch of 19 kind of 60s, 70s containers there, like tins and stuff. Um, they do know that these are really popular right now and they just slap the courting price tag on them. Back in the day, those tins would be like a euro a piece, but now they actually probably quadrupled the price. This teapot was also kind of cute, but it was 650 and had quite a big crack on the bottom, so uh, that's a pass. 
actually these ikea lictal lamps are case glass and they are so so popular right now they are selling like hotcakes online they are not my style at all so i left this one but if you're looking for one this one was only four euros i was just very quickly admiring this fat lava lamp they were selling for 65 euros and then i walked past it like very fast These are vintage ceramic coasters from Greece and I actually do have a set of these at home that I picked up for free at a thrift store here in Germany. They're quite nice though. And these are actually Frisian ceramics you find in pretty much every single thrift store here in the north. In my last thrift with me I did show a planter made in this style and there is so much of this pottery like everywhere here. For a small second I was really into this pot, but when I took it out of the shelf and looked at it closely I uh, realized that it was actually made super duper wonky and then I put it back right away. And this was so adorable, it was this wooden mouse with those tiny skewers in it. And this is actually for eating cheese, it's such a Dutch thing. People in the Netherlands actually really love eating like cheese cubes and other like small things and yeah, it's just a cultural thing. This round bowl was actually kind of cool. It was marked on the bottom, it was only 175. Why did I not get it? I don't know, you tell me. Sometimes I guess I'm just in a haze when I'm thrifting. I probably should have gotten this one. I'm now back in Germany. I kind of forgot to show you everything I found last time. But first, before we're gonna get into the stuff that I got this time, I'm gonna show you the stuff that I forgot from last time. At the first time, I actually picked up some jewelry and I think that they were around a euro a piece because none of it was priced. And usually if you have little stuff there or small stuff there, they will price it around a euro. So I got these earrings and they're not clip-ons, they're actual real earrings and I still have to sanitize them um, before I put them in my ears. And then I also got these earrings, they're all vintage by the way, probably from the 90s I would say. These dangly ones that are really cute, they have those two sort of leaves hanging there and yeah, really nice. And then I also got a necklace. I'm always looking for like really nice dainty goldish looking necklaces. And this one has four dark red stones in there. It's very hard to find those kinds of necklaces for some reason, at my thrift stores at least. So whenever I come across one, I'll pick it up. Now we're actually onto all the stuff that I found during this thrift trip. At the first store, I didn't find any clothing whatsoever, but I found something for my store and then also something that I'm gonna keep for myself that I'm so excited to share. We're gonna start with a thing for the store first. So what I got for the store, it's actually a set of five, but I can't I can't hold the fifth one. A set of soup bowls with a handle from the 1970s. They're all marked with just a stamped letter K. So I'm, oh no, this one's marked with an E. I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> this one's also marked with a K, yeah, I don't know. But they're all uh, stamped with a random letter and I thought these were really nice. They are a little bit speckled but they have this really nice ombre, like this caramel to dark brown effect which I thought was really cute. And yeah, that's what I'm going to be putting in my store in the future when it reopens someday when we're moved. <laughs> and then you guys, I found the best thing ever, 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 ever. My Botanica dishes have just been dethroned. I haven't even had them for that long but they've been kicked off the throne like so I found this really amazing set of dishes that I'm going to show you in a second and at first I thought okay I love them so much but I have my botanical ones so I guess I'm just gonna sell them and when I took them home my husband saw them and he said you better not sell these I found this set of blue brown dishes that is very likely according to the store owner made in Friesland Friesland that's also very likely made in either Mokkum or Varkum. If you're from there, you probably know those places. This really cool bowl 
serving bowl thing. I don't know, you could put like nuts in it or if you have very small sides, I guess you could put something in it. I paid 28 euros for the whole set. Then there is also this ceramic pitcher and this um, warmer for technically a teapot, but the pitcher was on it, so maybe it's also supposed to go on here. Maybe you could put like hot water to your coffee in there. Then I got two of these cups, which look like coffee cups, and then a set of four of those cups, and they look more like they'd be for tea. The matching set of saucers for these. And then I also got those two little plates. I'm not sure what they're for. They could be for tea bags, like if you take them out of your mark or whatever they could also be for pity four if you have those really tiny cakes then i got two of these little pitcher things so i guess they are creamer pots i don't know what i'd use a second one for because one would be a creamer pot and the second one i'm not sure then i have these two pots as well they were both sugar pots i'm gonna be honest she had the whole set and then i saw two things in the window display the creamer pot and the sugar pot and i was just so ecstatic about finding the set that I'm like, I'm just gonna buy these as well. So I got those, so now I have two, I don't know. Maybe I'm gonna also sell one set then. We'll see about that. Then I also have this little, just random cup. So I don't know, this could be for juice or water. This one would actually be really nice for jam and then a spoon putting some jam in it. And then this little serving dish. Oh, look at it. It would be perfect for putting some breakfast stuff on there and like some, uh, stuff to put on your bread for example i think that would be really really nice and lastly from the set i have two egg cup holders one random small plate which is very small i think that this would be a cake plate for a small piece of cake and i have one very large dinner plate so as you can see this set is not complete so i will definitely keep my botanica dishes for a while but very honestly when this set is complete i'm Underscore. maybe I'm gonna keep both if in a few years I have a really large house I'll keep both that was everything that I picked up in the first store I didn't pick up a ton of stuff in the second store I only picked up one thing for my Etsy shop and it's this really nice studio pottery mug it's not marked but it is from very likely also the 1960s or 70s it has this really cool shape to it so that's gonna be in my shop in the future as well I'm gonna keep you updated very soon about all the things going on and happening right now because with the move it's just a big chaos. I actually found one piece of clothing and I'm almost ashamed to say what it is. Don't judge me, okay? But it's this really, really nice, brightly colored blouse, which I think a lot of people <laughs> would just find so gaudy and ugly. But I think it's so cool. It's handmade, it's vintage. I'm not sure how old it is because it is handmade. Just from the style, I would say maybe, it could be 90s, it could also be 70s. It's just really hard to tell. But I like the colors, they're so bright. I do not have a blouse that is like that brightly colored. Yeah, that's why I just needed it. If you like this video, make sure to check out these ones here on the side. Thank you for watching. If you're not subscribed, make sure you do because I post a lot of videos about thrifting and second and finds every week. We're currently moving, so there's a little bit more moving content that's gonna change soon. I'll see you in my next video. Have a great day. Bye!